Well, actually, if you look at uh, the uh, stage of development, there's a, a number of phases. You start very early and it takes years and years and years through uh, the entire, uh, let's say, development of youth until you come into senior football and then again, even the most talented, they need a couple of years, need uh, the respective uh, competition in order to um, develop into a real top player. If you look at football, there's not always top class players. There's a number of uh, average players who make professional teams, even national teams, who are very useful players. You don't have only Messis and then Suarez and Fabregas and then Özil or whatever you, you, you may name, uh, name here. Huh? So uh, there's also the uh, average but very useful player for a team. I think uh, professional football has uh, a lot developed, in particular with all the technology, training looks a little bit different, despite all the, the let's say, the essence of training is the same. You are working on tactics, you're working on individual skill, of course you work on uh, physical fitness, uh, that's for sure, but uh, there's a lot of uh, technical uh, um, support now with the computer analysis, etc. So that has changed a lot. In a way, it helps you as a coach, because in the old days, you had to, to demonstrate, you have to talk to players. Now you can uh, visualize, you can show it. And um, of course, that underlines your idea and what you think you have to, to pass on to the players. No, I, I wouldn't say that. It depends on uh, the individual coach. Some rely more on that. I'm more of the, the older school. I think uh, still uh, the, the, the work on the pitch, what you see and how you correct and how you uh, guide players is important. And the technical uh, aid is just uh, an addition to it. Uh, so my main focus is still on the pitch, dealing directly with players, talking to them, guiding them. I think, uh, from my point of view, that could never change because what is played on the field is not too scientific. It is emotional, it's on the, uh, based on experience because uh, uh, players on the pitch, they have to know where to go, when to, to show for the ball, when to go deep, when to push over and there's no computer that will help them in the game. So you have to, to uh, I mean, uh, um, all the demands from the game you have to uh, transfer into training and then back to the game as well. I think um, that is probably uh, the biggest obstacle because uh, you don't see yourself. The distance from me to you is that I can observe you your behavior, the way you present yourself, but I cannot see how I behave, how I, let's say, uh, have an impact on other people, because the distance to me, there is no distance, but the distance to, to watch uh, or uh, to judge somebody else, of course, is given, because I can observe you, I can see the way you, you deal with people, you do your job, and um, that is a lot easier, and therefore, if you think you are without any mistake, you know everything, that is the first mistake you can make. It is a good mix. And um, you see, if you are just, uh, let's say, uh, rational, then uh, it's okay. But you also have to show emotions. So uh, in order to, to inspire, in order to motivate. If I'm just uh, in a very, uh, let's say, uh, uh, emotionless tone. I talk to you, uh, listen, you have to do that and you have to do that and that is your job. It, I think it's not ideal, but if I tell you, I say, listen, that is your job and today we play against this team. Huh? If you do that and that and that, you're going to be better than your opponent. We're going to open our game and we come to a conclusion or whatever, you see? That is what makes it. Huh? You have to show your emotions, controlled of course, but in order to motivate and to inspire, 
Uh, it's not good enough just to explain. Thank you.